Welcome back. So today we'll talk about ciliary spasm. And this is where the homeopia started. This is where before you started wearing glasses, the first time you went to the optometrist and got a glasses prescription, this is why. And if you want to read more about the science, I'll link some stuff below. Ciliary spasm, your focusing muscle in your eye gets locked up from staring at a screen too long. And the question is, is that happening to you today? Because if you're working on improving your eyesight, but your ciliary muscle is locking up every day because you're staring at the screen too long, it's very hard to improve because the positive stimulus that we work on to improve your eyesight isn't really gonna work effectively if the focusing muscle isn't participating. So a question people ask me pretty frequently is how do I know if I'm overdoing my close-up? How do I know that my ciliary muscle is locked up or is not locked up? And I'll give you a real simple trick to do that today. First, my name is Jack Steiner. I used to have minus five to to high myopia. I'm now at natural 2020. No Bates method, no funky eye exercises, just proper science and all the things I explained in these videos and on endmyopia.org, which you can visit from the link below. So, very simple. The ciliary spasm test. Jake's ciliary spasm test. What you do is, at wherever you work up close primarily, so whether that's your home or your office or whatever, wherever you're in front of screens most of the time, print out an eye chart. You can really print out anything with text on it, but an eye chart's handy because it has bigger text and small text and small text and small text. Just on a piece of paper. Put it, tape it to a wall that's at a distance from your desk where if you either take off your glasses, it's difficult to read, but you can still make out some of the lines or if you're wearing differential glasses you reduce glasses for close-up same thing where you can still read some of the lines but they're challenging to read before you start working so it's you your office your home wherever you have your computer set up and somewhere on a wall or here behind you somewhere is an eye chart it doesn't have to be at a specific distance the distance has to be wherever you can still read it and with no correction or the correction that you choose. It just has to be challenging to read. Now, from there you just do your regular close-up work. However you do it, the test is however you do it. So say for example, I'm spending three hours in one go answering a bunch of emails and form questions and doing and myopia stuff, which I don't. But if I did, then after you're done with that, look at the eye chart again. Compare your vision Compare your ability to read the lines from before the close-up time to after the close-up time. And the way this works is very, very simple. If you can't see as clearly after your close-up time, the only thing that changed in that time period, as long as the lighting is the same, very, 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 very important, the lighting has to be the same, right? Distance the same, lighting the same. Now you look at the same letters and they're all blurred. What happened? Right? If three hours ago you could read the same letters and three hours later you can't read the same letters, what changed? And of course you know the answer to this. What happened is you spent so much time staring at that screen with your ciliary focusing muscle in your eye at tension that now the tension doesn't fully relax, right? And if the tension doesn't fully relax, then your lens is kind of stuck in a semi-close-up mode. And if it's stuck in semi-close-up mode, it doesn't give you the right focal plane for the distance that your eye chart is at and now you can't read it. So that is really probably one of the easiest way to tell if you have ciliary spasm. And you can translate this to, you don't even, if you have a, an outdoor window, right, where you're working and you can see a billboard outside or something and you can sort of kind of read it and then you spend two hours up close and then you can't read it, same thing. You just need distant text, right? where all, every other variable stays the same, the light stays the same, the distance stays the same, the text is the same, of course. You can't see it when you could see it a few hours ago. You can't read it. So if that happens, ciliary spasm. And the ideal scenario is you put that on the wall and you get into the habit of looking up, you know, look up after half an hour. If the thing looks blurry, your ciliary spasm yik, is stuck. So now you need to look outside, you need to take a break, claim that you're smoking even if you're not, take whatever you need to get some distance vision. Challenge your eyes for distance vision. The easiest way to relax that focusing muscle is to get real distance vision that you're challenging yourself to get. 
reading something further away. And people are always looking for shortcuts. I know because I am, because there are times when I need to spend a lot of time up close and it's really difficult to get away from. It doesn't mean you have to act on it, I just want you to know it. Whenever you're looking at that, that eye chart or whatever you printed out, everything on it looks blurry, that muscle is locked up. No question about it, because if you think about it, if you think about the biology of how the eye works, how the focusing system in the eye works, the lens and the focusing muscle, the thing is locked up, right? And then compare it again, like you go for a 15 minute smoke break, whatever, and then you come back, you look at it again, is it now as clear as it was when you started in the beginning of the day? If that's the case, ciliary spasm is gone, right? Very simple, like you can self-assess whether your ciliary muscle has full range of motion or not, just with that simple test. One little disclaimer there, it's possible that your ciliary spasm is always locked up to some degree, right? Like it's a muscle, right? So it's a circular muscle that when the tension, when it, it's under more tension, it moves the lens, right? It gets tight like this. So it's possible that even in a relaxed state, it's not all the way relaxed like this, but it's kind of like that because you, you just have an ongoing ciliary spasm that you're not aware of. And those that one can take days or weeks or months to resolve if you're just starting out with improving your eyesight. When sometimes when you see people improving their eyesight a lot, right, very quickly, it is possible that that ciliary spasm is just going away because it's unlikely that your vision, that your the, the length of your eyeball shortens and that gets in kind of a bigger topic in a matter of months in a way that you would notice it in the opters. So that's, well, that's not true. Three to four months, 0.25 doppers you can reduce, but any much more than that, unlikely. So that can be ciliary spasm. But you won't really notice that with this test. This test is primarily just to see, did I spend too much time up close right now? And then you can take this further because now you can go for an hour outdoor walk. You can come back inside and you can look at that eye chart again, compare to how it was to how it is now, see what kind of difference the outdoor walk made. And then on top of that, you can now spend half an hour, an hour up close, look at it again and see whether it's becoming as blurry again as quickly as it did with a short break. You can compare the effect on your eye from taking a long outdoor break to taking a short outdoor break just by looking at did my ciliary lock up quickly again after the 10 minute break? Did it lock up quickly again after the hour break? Or inversely, did it not? So that very simple test tells you a lot about what's going on with your eye and it gives you the tools to lower your, your close up strain as much as you'd like to. You know, you can, you can weigh off the, the consequences of saying, hey, I need this much close up or I don't. That's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.